Thank you for joining the Once Changing the World, which is India's first future tech meets sustainability podcast. And today I'm delighted and honored to have with me Mr. Pankaj Kapahi, who is the professor at Buck Institute for Research on Aging. He has also founded Juvify with the vision to promote lifestyle interventions like fasting to improve health span. Dr. Kapai is an expert in the field of fasting and its protective effects for slowing aging and age related diseases. Dr. Kapai obtained his BSc and PhD from the University of London and the University of Manchester respectively. He did his postdoctoral work at the California Institute of Technology before starting his own laboratory at the Buck Institute. His laboratory has made significant contributions in the areas of nutrient responses, aging and metabolism. The Kapai Laboratory studies the role of advanced glycation and products in influencing obesity and promoting the risk of several age-related diseases, including diabetes and Alzheimer's. They utilize worms, flies and mice as model systems to understand how nutrients influence age-related changes in specific tissues and disease processes. So Dr. Really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. Now the field of research on aging is quite young but over the years there have been various breakthroughs in life extension but largely I think these have been in animal uh, models. So could you like give a brief history of the field? Where did this all start from? And where are we today in the field of aging research and science? Yeah, thank you very much. It's uh, <clears throat> great to be on this podcast. Um, I'm <clears throat> the, I mean, aging, I guess the interest in aging is as old as, <clears throat> I guess, uh, mankind, you know, um, are, you know, for it's been going on for thousands of years. And there's mention of it in old textbooks as well. So, um, but, the, the serious sort of inquiry into research of lifespan extension, one of the earliest uh, studies is on the, on caloric restriction is in the 1930s by uh, by McKay et al. And and that time, um, um, what they observed was that a restriction of calories of 40-50% could actually extend lifespan by almost 50% in mice. Uh, and, 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 and that has now been replicated in over 30 different species. And you know, to date, I think uh, to date, I think caloric restriction remains the most robust method to extend lifespan. And um, you know, our lab has been studying the mechanisms of how this work uh, works due, using Drosophila, C. elegans, and and now mice as well. So, so Professor, can can you like el- elaborate a little bit more uh, on this? You know, when you talk about uh, dietary uh, restrictions and fasting, you know, fasting is something I think you know, India at least you know, we we, we do it on a regular basis. Uh, can you expand yeah. uh, the you, you know you, you, this? What, what are you talking about? The, your research on life extension with dietary uh, dietary restrictions. How does it work? Yeah. First of all, I just want to get some definitions uh, clear. Uh, we use the word dietary restriction, which is a general word for a restriction of different types of nutrients. But there are many forms of uh, restriction of calories or or or, or, or or you know fasting approaches that work. So one is um, uh, some of the ones that were conducted in the lab earlier was a, to, a restriction of uh, total calories, and they found that calorie restriction of calories was the key thing in extension of lifespan. But uh, since then, other studies have also done, for example, restriction of carbohydrates and restriction of protein, and that uh, they also both uh, seem to extend lifespan. However, one problem is it's not that easy to restrict calories, especially for human. The compliance is not great. So one other approach that's become very popular recently is called intermittent fasting, where all you're trying to do is really delay uh, the the time when you eat so what uh, for example a 16 8 fasting regime would be 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of eating that's the one uh, i follow and it's it's quite common and and uh, one reason i do it is because i can just do it daily and make it part of my lifestyle um so since the earlier studies on uh, uh color ca- what's called calorie restriction uh, some of the questions that have come up which are now beginning to get answered is is it total calorie restriction that matters? Is it specific nutrients that matter? Or is it the timing at when, when you eat matters? And the answer is actually yes to all of them. So number one, yes, restriction of total calories will extend lifespan, especially restriction of carbohydrates. 
um, and also in in certain cases, re restriction of amino acids uh, has been shown to extend lifespan in both uh, flies and also mice. The the second part, uh, uh, and then the idea is this is restriction of food without causing malnutrition. So you're not really uh, you're trying to maintain uh, an otherwise healthy diet, uh, but you're you're just restricting you know the the part the major macro, macronutrients. So the, the timing has been shown to be important recently. And the idea is that if you couple both eating less, but also eating, but also having extended fasting time. So that means like you know, anywhere between 16 to, to 20 hours, uh, that helps you even further. Uh, so th there's this idea that uh, while you're fasting, um, you know, the, the metabolic processes uh, I mean, the repair processes are activated such that, you know, the body, one idea is in terms of evolution is that when you're fasting, the body goes into a um, sort of a, a survival mode. So when we're eating, you're in what we call the reproductive mode. The organism is busy trying to find nutrients to reproduce. But when you go into the survival mode, the animal, what it's trying to do is buy time so that when nutrients would be plentiful, then it would reproduce. So one of the byproducts of this uh, buying time is that you the, the organisms, and this is seen across species, they enhance their cellular defenses so they are protected against stresses, but also aging. So actually they can just survive longer over time. So that, that's a sort of a byproduct of the, of, and, and that sort of can be, you can hijack that and, and, and sort of try fasting and essentially you, you uh, activate those processes to benefit basically it's so exciting and and it's it's not just exciting it's a little weird that you know caloric restrictions does this to a body i mean in a weird way it it, it you know it kind of helps in uh, human longevity there's some crazy things going on if, with with a human body but uh, you know what the, these fasting and the, these punishing diets is not something which is really uh, you know conducive for everyone not everybody likes that approaches but that you know there are these products now in the market that kind of emulate the benefits of, of fasting and you are also the founder of Juvify and you have a supplement co called Glylo which does something in the similar lines right can can you can like an, an elaborate on uh, Juvify and, and and the product the supplement Glylo so you're right I mean um, the the it's not easy to fast um, but it, it's uh, you know that's where it, I just wanted to add that intermittent fasting is a little easier because all you're saying is I will delay my food uh, intake for maybe another couple of hours. But uh, while we were doing research in our lab on reducing glycation, so I just want to first explain glycation. So the idea is that sugar causes damage to our body, and that's the same thing that's happening in diabetes, and 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 through and it causes damage through glycation. So it causes sort of irreversible um, modification of proteins, DNA, and lipids, and and that uh, builds up with age. So that's the process of glycation. And everybody knows about this because every time you make a toast, for example, you are, you're essentially using glycation chemistry to create more flavors. Glycation is simply amino acids and sugars reacting. And when you make a toast, you make about 50 new flavors. So when you caramelize onions, all that, that browning that you see when you're, when you're cooking, that's glycation. Unfortunately, that is also slowly happening in our body. And that causes accelerated aging and, and diabetic pathologies. So we were studying that process and we, uh, we found that a combination of supplements, nicotinamide, lipoic acid, piperine, uh, thymine, and pyridoxine, uh, the combination of them, uh, we had individually screened lots of compounds and we found that the combination was very good at reducing glycation due, due to a specific uh, byproduct called methylglyoxal, which is, which is a byproduct of glycolysis. So every time, every cell that is using sugar keeps making this byproduct, methylglyoxal, which causes this glycation, which, is, which becomes dangerous. So no cell can avoid this. So we, we, we came up with a strategy to reduce this. So then we, so we were really interestingly in, in initially focused on just its, you know, lifespan extension, potential lifespan extension benefits and 
and against diabetic pathologies. But when we gave this to the animal, one of the things we found that they ate less. Um, um, but they were, and not only did they eat, eat less, they have improved insulin sensitivity, and they and it also extended lifespan even when given late in life at about you know twenty four months of age. So based on that, uh, you know the the buck filed a patent on on the combination supplement, and that's that's what is uh, now commercially available. We use compounds that are uh, that are called um, that are in in the USA considered supplements essentially that are that are that are they're generally regarded as safe our idea was to instead of going after uh drugs explore the space in the in the very safe compounds for example um four of those compounds so piperine is a component of black, black pepper and and the others are vitamin b1 b3 b6 and lipoic acid all four of those compounds are made by our body already or or, or are found in our body either through vitamins or 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 our, um, and and so we we um, so the idea is that we we took those uh, substances which would not have uh, you know would be likely to have fewer side effects and we wanted to see if if that would be beneficial, and that's 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 why I'm excited about this product because um, you know the the safety is this they would have lesser safety issues which have previously plagued the this field of advanced glycation end products because there was there were some interesting drugs that had been developed but because of side effects those clinical trials had to be stopped. So here we started with compounds that are generally regarded as safe. So one of the ways to sort of use glylo, so like I said, it has both short-term and long-term effects. But one of the things it does is it sort of reduces cravings for for sugars especially. So you can, you know, it's it uh, when you when you take the, you know, the glylo pill and I've been using it for two years, essentially it allows you to curtail your carbohydrate intake and it and and we have figured out the mechanism for this. It looks like it blocks the effects of the hunger hormone uh, ghrelin. So we we found that normally when you get hungry, ghrelin uh, levels go up, and that's telling our our you know brain to sort of seek food. Um, but this seems to blunt the effects of of ghrelin. And so you've you've we've created uh, you know what we are finding in mice is we've created a situation where the brain thinks it's well fed, whereas the body is receiving about you know uh, anywhere between 20 to 40 percent fewer calories so in humans the way we try to sort of adopt this is we're trying to say do continue to do your fasting but also you know take this this will just make it easier so but in addition to fasting we're finding there are more effects than just the effects of fasting of glylo because it extends lifespan even in older animals which normally caloric restriction of fasting is not that good at extending lifespan in very old animals. So when we did our experiments, we found that even in very old animals, it has a very significant lifespan extension. So we think a couple of multiple things are happening um, uh, simultaneously to get those uh, benefits. Right, interesting. So these are really early days, but you're saying, you know, I mean, uh, with, with your fasting, I mean, this additional... Uh, uh, intake of glylo is, is gonna help uh, now you have been leveraging you know worms flies and mice to understand and translate the benefits of the research and diseases as well as life extension for humans can you share the current update and how is the learnings from these invertebrates being leveraged for life extension i mean i think these these model organisms have been uh, really instrumental in in changing the aging field. So for example, when I was a postdoc, um, one of the, the discoveries I made was uh, around the TOR pathway, which is the target of rapamycin. So rapamycin now has become one of the most established drugs as well for lifespan extension, but it's a drug-like molecule, so you need a uh, doctor's prescription for it. it, it it's an anti-cancer drug, but it hits a nutrient sensing pathway. That means the idea uh, which I sort of, uh, the question that we asked in, in, in flies was, well, if this is a major pathway that is important for nutrient sensing, that means uh, when TOR is activated, the animal takes the nutrients and, and uses that to build the different macro, you know, the different uh, cellular components. But if you turn it down, the question we asked was, if we turn it down, can that mimic the effects of caloric restriction or, or essentially create a situation where the animal would be essentially eating less. And that's exactly what we found in, in flies first. Um, and this has now been um, uh, 
there's research has been done in multiple species, uh, including mice and, and C. elegans. We're essentially uh, limiting this uh, pathway target of rapamycin either by giving rapamycin or genetically will extend lifespan. So that, that was one example. And, and this, this uh, um, um, the glycation studies we, we started in our lab uh, also had a similar path. We found that, so, you know, people know that glycation is sort of uh, associated with, um, with sort of accelerated aging, but it hadn't been uh, well established that reducing glycation would extend lifespan. Um, so in C. elegans, because they only live like about 20 days, um, we can ask these questions much more rapidly. And, and the other problem is glycation events take decades in humans to accumulate. So, you know, it's not trivial to, to see the accumulation of these sort of uh, molecules. But in, in C. elegans, so we were able to create a system where within three days, you can see the damage due to glycation. The animals had peripheral neuropathy, just like they have in diabetes. And, and you could see the break, break uh, you know, the nerves actually um, um, sort of uh, 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 the nerve neurodegeneration taking place within three days. And then we were able to rescue it with lipoic acid, which is one of the components of glylo. Uh, and lipoic acid is really exciting because it's already given for diabetes um, uh, and diabetic complications in multiple countries, including India. So this, uh, we, we found that uh, one of the benefits of lipoic acid is also to reduce glycation and to activate this pathway, which helps detoxify the the damaging products um, like glycation essentially no. two examples where we you can essentially use these a model organism either, either to test drugs or to create models where you see accelerated aging and then you try to fix it aging and, and disease are correlated you know because you know aging brings the onset of all kinds of disease and you mentioned you know through through your understanding of you know the research in longevity you are kind of a, a understanding why that you know these other diseases are, are also ha happening so could, could you could you talk a little bit more about this you know through this this uh, your longevity research uh, are you also able to uh, understand the other uh, diseases which are all age related because you know after a certain age you know diseases like i mean you know it, it brings uh, all of these diseases so is is the understanding uh, and longevity research kind of helping in possibly mitigating these age related uh, diseases yeah no, that's an excellent question you know uh, the the idea is that of most of the time like you know pharma and and research has been focused on individual diseases and what we are doing uh, and buck institute is one of the leaders in this uh, sort of space is we are using we're trying to study the aging process because the aging process is the biggest risk factor for cancer diabetes a, a, a several lot of age related neurodegeneration um, uh, uh, neurodegenerative diseases and also cardiovascular diseases so we're thinking if we um, if we identify, um, you know, some key aging processes or 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 some uh, key, uh, you know, uh, cellular processes that are driving aging, then maybe we could tackle multiple diseases at the same time. And and you know that was our that's why we're interested in glycation, and that's how fasting seems to work as well. It seems to uh, sort of uh, um, coordinately sort of enhance the sort of function of a cell by uh, by influencing multiple processes including autophagy you know protein repair but also also nutrient sensing pathways like tor and insulin signaling are are sort of down regulated so you're 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 you it's it's sort of um, you know coordinately involves multiple patterns which i think is the most likely to give the sort of maximal benefits of sort of uh, slowing aging on protecting against age related diseases Right. So now you you are part of Buck Institute, which happens to be one of the first institute in America, which is looking at uh, longevity uh, re research. So could you talk a little bit more about Buck Institute, your role? And, and you mentioned about cellul cellular senescence and Judith uh, Campesi is a leader in the space. You know? So could you talk about cellular senescence and aging and why is it crucial in the science of aging? Yeah. So as you mentioned, Judy is one of the leaders in the field. And, and she made this very interesting discovery that um, um, uh, that as, you know, th this was Hayflick and then further carried on by, by Judy, but but that uh, as cell dividing cells uh, over time stop proliferating, 
and they accumulate uh, um, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, beta galactosides, which became a marker for senescence. But the idea was that it allowed easy identification of cells that stop dividing and just sit there. And one of the things that Judy's lab is, is sort of uh, uh, you know taking the lead in is I understanding what these sort of what you so called zombie cells. What do they do? They're you know the senescent cells. And one of the the problems is they keep secreting pro-inflammatory cytokines or, or or damaging molecules. Now, there are two sides to the senescence uh, field, which I think is, are important to understand. So, um, and Judy's lab has demonstrated that, that when an injury takes place, you also produce senescent cells and their function is to actually uh, bring in inflammatory products so that they can repair the, the injury. Um, but what's, what's happening with age is that they're uh, in the sort of, um, there's a, essentially a state of chronic inflammation because these senescent cells are are keep producing the uh, inflammatory cytokines, and and it just it's like an alarm that keeps going on, um, and 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 as a result, it ends up creating damage because they're just too it the the tissue gets flooded with too many um, inflammatory cytokines, and you're not really the repair isn't possible. So. So one approach, uh, you know, sort of very elegant approach, which has worked very well, is sort of, why not just remove these senescent cells? And we have actually um, found that glycation um, and, and sort of uh, uh, sugar-induced glycation will also enhance senescence. And um, uh, the components in glylo, like including nicotinamide, have been shown to reduce senescence as well. So. Um, and, and so multiple pathways are being discovered how to either uh, turn down the inflammation or the, the cytokines that are being produced by senescent cells or just eliminate these senescent cells in the first place. So so you can continue uh, a cell, the, the, the tissue could be healthier because it, you've taken out like these sort of, uh, these, uh, these cells that are being producing the danger signal essentially. Dr. Neer Bazila is heading a human longevity clinical trial for centenarians called TAME. The project is called TAME, which is target uh, targeted aging with metformin. Could you could you give your views on uh, TAME and when and who do you see bringing the first real world therapy uh, targeting aging? I, I would take this out because uh, I think the metformin is just one way, but I I think the field has a lot of interesting um, targets. Uh, but metformin is the one um, which is already given to a lot of people. So, you know, there's potential in extending, improving health. But it's that data sort of is already in in some ways it's already out there. It can improve the the life expectancy of diabetics. I mean, that's one way to look at it, right? So you could argue it is it is a it, it is sort of a a drug that improve extends health span in in diabetics. And the question remains, will it work in have normal people or, or not as well? And that's what the trial is around. But, you know, for example, in our, um, you know, I think there are going to be other targets that, that we will see um, even be more better. For example, fasting is better than metformin, right? I mean, there's no question about it. Uh, what are the big uh, unanswered questions that you are going out for and what comes next for you? I think um, here's something I that I have been um, really sort of puzzles me, and it remains a paradox in the field. So on one hand, the field is identifying, you know, uh, we are learning a lot more all that, that we've been discussing on in this podcast. Um, and, and, and so as our awareness of this is improving and we're discover, discovering more things about fasting and a healthier lifestyle, why is it, that the world, the direction of the uh, pop, average population, the, the, it's going towards, is is going in the other direction. Which means, why is the why, what I mean is why are the obesity rates actually going up? So um, the obesity rates have now gone to over forty percent of the in most of the developed world, the people are clinically obese, and it's expected to go to fifty percent by twenty thirty. So I think uh, I just want to say that even despite a lot of the understanding. Um, one of the biggest challenges remains, and this is something especially I'm learning. Uh, I, I didn't think as much about till I started, uh, you know, Juvify the, the, the company, because uh, it, when you start thinking about translation, you realize how hard it is. And and one of the, 
you know, things that's very important to me is to not, uh, you know, to deliver these um, options without uh, sort of um, economic disparity. I mean, uh, so so the idea is to have them, you know, accessible to everybody, right? And that's where I think fasting, that's one of the reasons I like fasting, because really um, um, fasting is something that, that you know, everyone can do. And, and also I want to add, so one of the things that we are thinking more about is, is um, you know, the other factors, for example, that, that are becoming clear that are very important in aging, and many studies argue, are things like human connectivity, depression. So, you know, uh, people who are more positive and more socially connected seem to live longer, okay? So, uh, 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 and, and so the idea is, I think all these different, uh, um, I mean, th this is gonna be an important piece to, to bring into, um, you know, when you're thinking of translation. Uh, but what I what I have my sincere hope is that th there are ways to sort of enhance our lifestyle uh, by by a combination of behavioral and and uh, and these sort of signal uh, you know these sort of scientific approaches uh, molecular approaches we're talking about which can which can give the most benefit to people and and it shouldn't be simply about taking drugs to live longer but I I think there's a lot more to exploit uh, which which sort of we're underutilizing. So public health policies um, have to change in a way that, you know, allow the maximal translation, you know, the maximal translation of all this knowledge that, that people have created. Even though we know fasting, uh, we've known this since the uh, 1930s that this would be beneficial. Uh, why is it that we're not adopt, you know, as a, as, a, as a whole population, why are we not being able to adopt these approaches as well? Right. Uh, Professor, I really hope that we moved to that world where we, you know, approach or, or maybe adopt a little bit more of the fasting because you said, you know, there, there is a problem. Uh, I, I feel that this, the, uh, the subject of human longevity is not so well known, though there is more people who are understanding it. It's largely the ones who are into tech uh, who understand the space and the larger population are completely unaware. And 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 it always looks like the ones who will be benefiting from this are the ones who are the millionaires or or, or the techies you know uh, and but like you said i mean this could be equitable for all and, and the approach one approach towards it is fasting which is which could be uh, uh, you know uh, everyone could approach that but i i guess the way the culture the society and religion looks at aging and disease or, or the eventuality of death is is something very it, it's, it's very rigid it's, it's like it's an eventuality and it should happen i think there right. needs to be more education where we make people the larger population understand that the science technology has come to a point where we are questioning things with logic and science and possibly fasting is an approach where where those age related diseases could be tackled i think the narrative needs to go out like that rather than i think the way the the rest of the world is approaching human longevity with supplements and possibly genetic therapy which is going to be not accessible at all but like i'm glad that you know we, we are talking about fasting which is a approach which everyone can take you know but i think it's it's about the education is there an approach you think could make the benefits of life extension or healthier lifespan uh, accessible for all? Yeah, some of the approaches that that are accessible to, you know, most people and and uh, that that I'm adopting um, are, you know, include fasting. Um, you know, I do 16, eight, uh, 16 hour fasting and you know eat my food in the eight hour time window. And and in that 16 hour, you it's overnight, so I. Uh, my dinner finishes at around seven and I eat my breakfast after around 11. Um, some days I, I will eat two meals or some days I go for three meals. But um, so, you know, keeping uh, so keeping a diet healthy. And also I eat more a plant-based, uh, more plant-based diet and ensure that their, their vegetables and fruits uh, and nuts are a big part of uh, um, of, the, of the diet. Um, and secondly, 
you know, uh, exercise is, is critical. I mean, I, I especially my mood uh, is elevated when I exercise. So I, I try to do four to five hours of uh, exercise a week, uh, aerobic and also add in strength training, um, resistance exercise to that. Um, and you don't need any equipment for this. You know, you can just do push-ups and squats and, 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 and just with that, uh, you, you can maintain a, a really uh, a good, healthy sort of exercise uh, regime. And uh, and I think the other one that's, I think, key uh, and should be number one really is, is mindfulness. Really um, going about your day uh, mindfully allows you to engage into healthier into healthier behaviors. And I think a, a key thing about mindfulness is also like a couple of factors that have shown to be very strongly associated with uh, longer lifespan are positivity and strong social interactions. So building that into your daily routine, making sure, you know, that we're doing our best to sort of reach out people uh, around us, uh, you know, um, um, will help not only make your life better, but also everyone else. And in addition, I take a couple of supplements uh, like Lilo, but I think I think the focus is on doing this because I think mindfulness allows you to attain not only a healthier lifestyle, but actually helps you, uh, makes you happier. So I, I think these are the approaches I, I'm taking, which I think are, are are accessible to all, which could actually help people. Right. You know, as as we are moving forward, as we are leveraging the, these really breakthrough technologies, somehow, you know, we, we have to kind of go back and, you know, dig into, uh, you know, our culture and our history and bring those, you know, those basic things. And it, it's, it's got to be like a mix and match of uh, uh, holistic, uh, you know, the, 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 things from there and leverage it with uh, you know the, the new that uh, I think possibly that could be you know the the way forward thank you really appreciate you being part of the podcast and to my listeners if you like what you see in here then please press the subscribe button until next time see you guys bye bye thank you professor thank you very much bye